Good morning. My name is Miguel Bruns, and I'm an associate professor at the Department of Industrial Design at Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands, where I research interactive products with programmable material qualities, focusing on haptics and shape change. I would have loved to be here today with you, but unfortunately some personal issues prevented me from traveling. I will now present our paper entitled Exploring Mechanical Metamaterial Structures Through Personalized Shoe Design. The work was conducted at the Materiality Lab of the Future Everyday Group by my graduate student Davida Marim as part of his final master project, which he did in collaboration with PhD candidate Troy Nattigal, who is wrapping up his thesis on computational materials for ultra-personalized product service systems, with a particular focus on shoe design. Let's first take a look at a short video to give you an impression of the design process we followed. I'm going to pause it here, do this. The video only plays in the presentation, so I'm going to pull this over, do the thing. This is totally normal, nothing's going to go wrong, it's great. Great. to this product. Ah, got it. Okay. Totally normal. Everything's fine. Do not panic. <laughs> so let's first try to describe what mechanical metamaterials are. Mechanical metamaterials are design structures with mechanical properties that are not found in ordinary materials. Their mechanical properties can be designed to have values that are not found in nature. For example, oxidic materials can have a negative Poisson ratio, meaning that such materials can contract transversely when they are compressed longitudinally. The figure illustrates such oxidic structure created by means of kirigami. Although these materials have been known for over a century, recent developments in digital fabrication have contributed significantly to the developments in its domain, as more diverse structures can be designed and produced. Mechanical metamaterials have been explored in physics. For example, the work of Corentin Coulet illustrates how one can program the shape of such materials. 
The figure illustrates how design textures can emerge from a surface when the cube is compressed, illustrating sensing and actuation. Combinations of metamaterial structures can support novel functionalities, for example in the area of soft robotics. Also, in human-computer interaction, Alexander Ayan and colleagues have investigated the potential of mechanical metamaterials. They designed this door handle to explore how artifacts can change their texture, thereby interacting with the environment and a user's tactile sense. Ayan et al. also illustrate how textures change can be used in shoe sole design to accommodate for different services and shoe manufacturers such as Under Armour and Adidas are exploring 3D printing of flexible material structures in their sneakers. The project we present builds on prior work by Troy Nachtigall and colleagues who designed and 3D printed a shoe for our former Minister of Education. These shoes utilize a 4D printing approach in a way that they are made to fit the user while they move and change. When walking or running, a foot can take up to 12 different shapes, and our ambition was to explore the possibilities of mechanical metamaterials which could offer uh, for shoe design to adapt to such shapes and thereby increase their comfort. Then what will be the relevance of such a project? And we think that this addresses both sustainability and personalization. Diversity of materials used in shoe design is often associated with the performance of a shoe. Different materials are used to achieve multiple properties and behaviors such as stiffness and softness. This creates material composites, which increase the complexity of recycling the shoe, precluding the product material to be reused and ending up in landfill and waiting to decompose. By using materials, uh, mechanical metamaterials with different properties, shoes can be designed out of one material, thereby significantly reducing their environmental impact, as shoes can be recycled more easily. Secondly, people are different. We have different bodies, tastes, and even emotional needs. Yet, people with the same foot size but with differences in the shape of the foot and weight usually wear the same types of shoes. In addition, the foot has to adapt to the shoe constraints when it actually should be the opposite. Personalized and shape-changing shoes can accommodate for the user instead. So, to frame our research goal, we intended to explore different combinations of 3D mechanical metamaterial structures uh, and to explore their behavior in shoe design, to show the potential that these materials could have and possible answers for the needs of creating more adaptable and sustainable footwear. The main questions that we wish to address is to discuss how to map mechanical metamaterial structure behavior accordingly to the different needs of different areas of the foot, and to explore what infrastructures are needed to explore the inherent qualities of mechanical metamaterial structures. We followed a research through design process to explore our research goal. This figure illustrates our process, starting from understanding the shape and the dynamics of the foot, as well as the different types of mechanical metamaterial structures. In the end, this resulted in a digitally manufactured shoe design. First, we tried to understand mechanical metamaterial structure behaviors and possible combinations. We collected data from the user's feet, analyzed the data by understanding the foot deformation and designing the shoe sole behavior. Continuously, we created a system to generate the shoe sole design and prepared a digital geometry for prototyping through a 3D printing process. In the current bit figures, one can see the different types of mechanical metamaterial structures. Uh, all these different mechanical metamaterial structures have diverse behavior and one can see, for example, mechanical metamaterial structures that are designed by means of a beam or uh, mechanical metamaterial structures with straight walls. These different mechanical metamaterial structures can eventually be combined to create novel types of mechanical metamaterial structures with different behaviors. These renderings then were 3D printed in order to explore a diverse set of mechanical metamaterials and understand how they would work in real life which we tested by placing actually our food on top of these mechanical metamaterial structures and see how they would respond to our weight. As a second step in the process, we collected the user data. 
by scanning the foot in a loaded position as well as in an unloaded position. And this data was crucial to understand how the foot changes when people are walking. Secondly, we use these data points to develop new uh, insights into the foot by having the user walk on a treadmill. With the data from the different pressure areas uh, from the foot, uh, we could assign mechanical metamaterial structure behavior to the foot's dynamic needs. For example, I'm mapping the structure behavior to certain areas of the foot, which are represented on the right with different colors on the image pressure maps. We analyzed our user data. So the figure illustrates the data collected from the foot scans and the pressure maps. One can see the different shapes in unloaded on the left and a loaded position on the right. The following figure shows the overlap of the 3D scans uh, to illustrate the foot deformation and below the shoe sole behavior we intend to design for. The sole made of mechanical metamaterial structures contract in the areas of high pressure and expand in the areas of less pressure to follow the natural deformation of the foot. Subsequently, we had to generate the design, which we did by using Grasshopper. With Grasshopper, we were able to create a flexible system Definition allows to upload different shoe sole designs, mechanical metamaterial structures library, and pressure maps, and control the mechanical metamaterial structures density and structure thicknesses. The figure illustrates the schematics of the Grasshopper algorithm. The components in the red group represent the three main inputs, the design space of the sole, pressure maps of the foot, and a library of mechanical metamaterial structures. The components inside the pink area represent the part of the algorithm that creates the different attractive points based on the RGB color of the image sampling component. The components in the black groups are the different mechanical metamaterial structures with distinct behaviors. In the purple groups are the different parts of the shoe sole, insole, midsole, and outsole. And this part of the algorithm voxelizes the design space while filling the voxels with the mechanical metamaterial structures and perfectly morph according to the overall space geometry. Lastly, the orange groups smooth the mesh and allow for thickness control of the mechanical metamaterial structure geometries. With our data, we started to prepare for 3D printing which was time intensive and required the use of different types of software, such as Magix, Mesh Mixer, NetFab, and Cura. And the geometries exported from Grasshopper required several adaptations to make them suitable for 3D printing. On the right, you can see how the sole was printed in our lab using Filaflex material. The results of our process showed different types of uh, studies. The first prototype is the Filifex prototype that was printed on the Ultimaker, but we also explored different structures and different materials of the sole, the insole, the midsole, and the outer sole. Finally, we created a design uh, which included an upper to illustrate how the whole shoe can be made out of one material. Here we show the renderings of our work, which represent different shoe designs and different mechanical metamaterial structures and how they can be applied in different types of materials. So to discuss the insights that we gained from our research, uh, there is currently a lack of software that is able to provide solutions and assist us in the workflow of developing concepts such as mechanical metamaterial structures. We suggest that future work should focus on developing a library of mechanical metamaterials with animations of their behavior when certain mechanical stimuli applied to the structure. This should enable the creation of customized structures before stimulus is applied. Software should show the possible outcome behavior, which would be an incentive to explore new structures, which ultimately could result in novel product properties for the field of mechanical metamaterials. Recommendations for which production method structures would be most appropriate. 3D print, such as FDM, SLS, SLA, DLP, or polyet, CNC milling, or injection molding, and which types of materials can be used. Although the majority of our structures are of a very complex geometry and only possible to be made by 3D printing, there are some less complex models which could use different types of production techniques. In, we need an indication of which mechanical metamaterial structures can be combined. 
Also, it would require added support for understanding the form and behavior of the foot as an input is fundamental in combining data and mechanical metamaterial structures. Finally, finite analysis of understanding the dynamic stress and strain in relation to the human locomotion would be ideal. To conclude, this project revealed to be very challenging on several aspects, particularly understanding mechanical metamaterial combinations or structures behavior, optimizing the structure design to FBM methods of, of production, dealing with software issues that concern intuitiveness and limitations to generate designs using mechanical metamaterials. I'd like to thank you for your attention. And if you're interested to, in our work, please get in touch. We have various post-up positions opening in our group in the coming months. And we're here to take some questions.